Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV for the news flash. Today we have Oceana Gold, Max Silver, and Copper Mountain Mining. Oceana Gold has received the mining permit for Varekiraoponga WKP on the northern island of New Zealand. The mining permit grants Oceana Gold the exclusive right to continue exploration activities and technical and environmental studies over the area. As part of the Greater Hawaii District study, the deposit is expected to deliver significant value for shareholders. K, uh, WKP currently has reported indicated resources of over 420,000 gold ounces at 13.4 gram gold per ton and inferred resources of around 720,000 gold ounces at 12.0 gram per ton. The company expects to continue drilling there for several years to advance the project through its life cycle. The Wai district has the potential to extend Wai's mine life to 2036 and beyond while providing meaningful socio-economic benefits for stakeholders. Oceana Gold reported second quarter financial results. The first half of 2020 consolidated production was at approximately 140,000 ounces of gold at all in sustaining costs of 1,237 US dollars per ounce and sales of around 150,000 ounces of gold. For the second quarter, gold production was at almost 59,000 ounces at all in sustaining costs of 1,265 US dollars per ounce gold and sales of 62,000 ounces of gold. Q2 revenues came in at 95.8 million US dollars with EBITDA of 12.4 million US dollars. The cash balance and total immediately available liquidity is 147.7 million US dollars by net debt of 169.6 million dollars. After quarter end, the company delivered the Wahi District Study PEA with after-tax IRR of 51% a net present value of 665 million US dollars and expected 2.2 million gold ounces produced over 16 years. Oceana Gold revised 2020 production guidance to 340 to 360,000 ounces gold on a gold solid basic AISC as re uh, reduced to 1,050 to 1,100 US dollars per ounce gold sold. As expected, the second quarter was a bit weaker, was a bit weaker as a COVID and pandemic lockdown. But Oceana Gold has done a great job, and especially in Q3, we will see better circumstances due to lower fuel prices and the stronger gold price. The next company we want to talk about is Max Silver. Max Silver performed pretty well despite a temporary suspension from the government through 30, uh, 30th May. The Juanicipio project restart commenced 1st June 2020 with the overall development timetable unchanged, according to the operator Fresnillo. Juanicipio plant still expected to commence commissioning in mid-2020 and reach 85% of its 4,000 tons per day nameplate capacity by year-end 2020. The total underground development to date is now approaching 30 kilometers, including 4.4 kilometers completed in the first half of this year. The first cross cuts through the veins have, made, uh, have been made from the easternmost footfall ramp, exposing well mineralized veins. Initial development indicates that the crate and width of the mineraliza mineralization are in line with previous estimates. Mac held a cash and cash equivalence as of 30th June 2020 before the ATM program of a bit more than 87 million US dollars, while Minera Juanicipio had cash on a 100% basis of around 35 million US dollars. In addition, the company used an ATM financing and sold over 2.3 million shares at an average price of 16.16 US dollars per share for gross proceeds of over 37 million dollars and so Max Silver is now well cashed up. The Juanicipio plant is expected to reach 85% nameplate capacity by the end of 2021 and 90 to 95% in 2022. Copper Mountain Mining. Copper Mountain Mining announced strong Q2 2020 financial results. In Q2, 
the Copper Mountain mine produced 23.9 million pounds of copper equivalent, consisting over 18 million pounds of copper, almost 7,500 ounces of gold and over 60,000 ounces of silver. This equals to around 22 million pounds of copper equivalent. Copper, gold and silver production in Q2 2020 was above the revised operating plan expectations. Copper Mountain Mining reduced the cash cost per pound copper significantly in Q2 2020. The all-in sustaining costs per pound of copper stood at 1.67 US dollars compared to 1.85 US dollars in Q2 2019. This is a reduction of almost 10%. Revenues increased around 40% to 91 million US dollars compared to 65 million US dollars in Q2 2019. And on the bottom line, there was an increase of cross profit from 1.6 million dollars in Q2 2019 to 30.3 million dollars this year. The company reaffirms their guidance for 2020 production of 70 to 75 million pounds of copper and the AIC guidance to 2.20 to 2.35 US dollars per pound of copper produced. Copper production is expected to be more heavily weighted to the second half of the year because of the higher grades and as the company begins to mine coarser grained ore areas which have a higher recovery rate bringing down costs further. That are good news from the mining, I would say. Thanks for watching us and bye bye from Switzerland.